sensed in. And the new NXT Women's Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all species, welcome to our wrestling perspective. If you like what you see, give it a big thumbs up. But if you want to make it your wrestling perspective, hear me out. All you need to do is add why. Yeah. See, then it makes it your wrestling perspective. I have to do it each time. I know people hate it. This upload slash video is none other than episode 10 of our series of our weekly perspective. I'm like, why do you add so many owls? Well, listen, sometimes you need to add an owl. But this video is episode 10 of our weekly perspective where we break down the week of wrestling and we do it each week. We've done nine episodes before. We even did a point five. Yeah, a point five. You're thinking, what's a point five? Well, maybe you need to check out that point five. But regardless, we're looking at the whole week of professional wrestling for this one from the 5th of April 2020 all the way up to Easter, Easter Sunday for me, the 12th of April 2020. Yeah. There was a couple like replays, but whatever wrestling there was, let's cover it. Let's see what the points were. So to kick this off, we're going to start none other with the WWE programming. Yeah, I said another none other, so you can take a shot by then. But we have to start with Monday Night Raw. Hopefully I'm getting that voice on down pat. I keep saying that. But what were the points that stuck out to me? And it was actually a couple of points that stuck out to me. Now let's look at the five points for Monday Night Raw and the first point. Apollo Crews, he's been now drafted from SmackDown to Raw. Wait, to Raw. But, uh, so wait a minute. So the feud with Sheamus actually got him to change brands? A lot of other wrestlers should feud with Sheamus. Second point being, I added the, the second point because it's a tag team team, so there's two of them. Yeah, I really try. Alright, calm down. But, it was Cedric and Ricochet that teaming up more. I like this, the one and only Lions, whatever they want to name them, up against Oni, Lorcan and Danny Birch. Yes, the Raw Tag Team Division looks like it's getting more spicy and about time because we needed a bit more oomph in a tag team division. So we're in the middle of Raw and the third point for me was Nia Jax returning. Hold on. No more Jax. No more Jax. Hungry Jax. And just when I thought Raw couldn't get a bit more interesting, fourth point, guess what? We saw Elliot Sexton, sorry, Brendan Vink back on Raw, but he was in a singles match against Humberto Carrillo. Hopefully I'm doing the whole rolls of the R's correctly, but it's fantastic seeing another Aussie representing on Monday Night Raw. And Brendan Vink, oh, he, he's just... He's hilarious. He's got the charisma. Look how tall he is. I should stop selling him, but if you haven't subscribed to his channel, go to it. Elliot Sexton on YouTube, unless he's changed it, I'm not too sure. But he has this smug series. And did you see his commercial for Monday Night Raw? If I'm taking Missy's arm home as a souvenir, must be Monday. And a big boot by Brendan Fink. If I'm shoving my size 16 boot in someone's face, must be Monday. Must be Monday. And fifth and final point for Raw slash WrestleMania 36 part 3 replay, whatever they want to call it, was the true main event of WrestleMania Big Show versus Drew. So wait a minute. Why? Why Big Show? So Big Show and Drew is the main event? Real main event of WrestleMania 36? Well, I've just got to stop looking at this camera and not say nothing and probably move on to the next point. They're looking at me like, come on, say something. What can I say? Well, it's the big show. Well, it's the big show. Now, right after WrestleMania 36 Part 3, I mean, sorry, now right after Monday Night Raw, we're going to move on to the Wednesday Night War between NXT and AEW. Before we kick this off, I always say this, hold on, a little hair flick. I always say this, you can love all professional wrestling and then nowadays you gotta love all of it because what's left of it. But, 
Some weeks you may have a preference in what you watch. Maybe it was the black and gold brand NXT that did it for you, or maybe it was that elite brand on TNT, we're talking AEW Dynamite. But what were the three points that stuck out from each show that I'm battling it against each other? And let's go for it. Let's kick it off. Let's do this! Starting with the Elite brand, all Elite Wrestling on TNT, we see the best friends finally overcome, take down Kenny Omega, even though it wasn't really Kenny Omega and Hangman Page, he had Nakazawa, it's still a win for best friends, I don't know how it works with the rankings, but surely they get a belt now, or some shot. <sighs> I'm still getting the hang of it. The second point that stuck out to me, I always love seeing Brody Lee. Now he's like a common occurrence on AEW and I really like seeing that. The way that he does his Exalted One promos, he makes me laugh. Not only does it make me laugh, it really entertains me. And why? And that's what confuses me. Why wasn't he talking beforehand with these excellent communication skills? Not like what me did. Wow, wow, wow. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. And the third and final point that stuck out to me for AEW, Cody advances in the tournament. Yeah, he beat Sean Spears for the second time. I will not allow. At least he, he nearly got to, to the chair and got him another one. But sorry, Chairman, it looks like the actual person on board or on the board is progressing further into this tournament. Ha, that's company bias. He owns it or he's ex executive vice president. Now on to NXT, what were the three points that stuck out to me? I made another rhyme, but first point, EOF in Shirai. Was that a second rhyme? See, he even lit up then, because it knew I did something right. But EO Shirai is... You know what? I'm actually pretty pumped to see EO Shirai give it to Charlotte if she just loses. You know what? I give up on NXT as well. Because you can't just... It really hurts my heart that they gave... That whole thing, the whole text of Rhea Ripley on YouTube, her giving her feelings on how she lost, and majority of that clip was Charlotte saying, "Yeah, well, I'm the queen." And you know what they gave to Char uh, Rhea? Sorry, sure, at least she was stronger than me. Oh, she's much stronger. I don't care. You know what? I'm so sick of it. But Io Shirai, please take the belt off. Well, see, I, I elaborated on that, but that was the first point. Io Shirai, new number one contender for the female NXT Championship. Second point that stuck out to me for NXT, we finally see it's finally over. Yes, between Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa. Yes, you know what? The feud was good, but it's not like what other people are saying that it's on the level of HBK and Triple H not letting it happen. That's hurting my childhood. Stop. Third point for NXT, did you see when Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae were walking out after Candice LeRae really helped Johnny in that match? It was a trick shot, huh? When they were walking through the car park, who did we see in a car? Exactly right. Ryback. No, I'm just kidding. It was Killer Cross and Scarlett Baudet. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. But yes, a couple feud like that. Yes, it was... I know people shit on me for saying that's anticlimactic, but it's kind of stalkerish. That's something Dexter Loomis would do. Ding a ding a ding. So who won for me? Was it all elite wrestling or was it the black and gold brand NXT? Hold on a quick second. <sighs> Boom. NXT did it for me this week. You know what, because I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that there was more into it. Not saying AEW had a bad episode. Sorry, mate. NXT done it for me this week. Bang, bang. Now on to NXT UK. To the wrong path. But the only issue was with NXT UK, it was a replay. I didn't even mean for that to rhyme. Damn. But... Yeah, it, the replay was basically, what a great moment with Tyler Bate. <laughs> now moving on to Friday, which is Saturday for me, but it's still Friday. We're talking Smackdown on Fox, and what were the points that stuck out to me? There was four points this week. Oh, there was a mid hiccup there. Let's kick it off. First point being for the blue brand, Smackdown on Fox. Forgotten Sons have debuted. I was legit joking around that maybe they get a main roster push it and get aligned with none other than The Undertaker so we can push this badass gimmick. Now we've forgotten, my dear. No, it's now with Deadpool. 
there. But anyway, I'm guessing it's good to see Morton into the SmackDown Tag Team division and with Revival officially released, I need, they need to put more. Second point being for SmackDown on Fox, now Carmella and Dana Brooke are a tag team going after the Women's Tag Team Championships when really Kabuki Warriors should have never lost it. Now Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross have it that are coffee freaks. And they're up against a tag team, which they could have called another NXT tag team, like what they did with Forgotten Sons, you know, like a PC call-up or something. No, Carmella and Dana Brooke. You know what? I'm not against the women's tag team. But why does Carmella always seem to be with someone? In some shape or capacity. At least it's new competitors, so... And third point being for SmackDown on Fox, that really stuck out to me. You know what, Tucker Knight, or what they've called him now because they've got rid of the Knight. Tucker, in general, has improved a whole heap, yeah? I'm a fan of the heavy machinery, but if they were to split because of the whole drafts, I'd be all for it. Because the way that Tucker gets intensified and this whole feud with Ziggler, I'm actually still interested in it. <sighs> well, that could be the isolation getting to me. And fourth and final point for SmackDown on Fox that really stuck out to me. Bray Wyatt, Braun Strowman, Universal title feud. I didn't know I really wanted this. Now I do. That whole segment of the Five Life I now say he just abandoned the family and that it's perfect as a first contender. And you know what? It's Braun's gonna have a bad run with each of the belts that he's had in the past because of how the build was. Now, how is he meant to get cheered? I guess if they're doing an empty PC that no one will cheer the fiend, but I'll be still cheering him at home. Loud enough? so they can hear it. And if there is a go- oh, wait, hold on a quick second. Please, Lord, give Bray back the belt. Now moving on to other wrestling. Now on to Impact Wrestling, and what were the two points that stuck out to me? First point being, I'm kind of really becoming a fan of the North. Even their promos, the way that they carry themselves, yes, I know, it's a whole Canadian type of thing, but it's so different and so unique to the point. And that whole match that they had with the World Heavyweight Champion the later on that night, and Eddie Edwards, I like it. The North, really good fan. If you haven't seen the North, do yourself a favour and do it now. And second point I'll try to do with the bowl rattling in the distance because I just fed my dogs so they don't get all locale or loco when I'm doing all of these tapings but the second point was Willie Mac and Ace Austin their whole feud I'm really invested into it I don't know what it was I really thought this was a whole throw off but the Willie Mac that we're seeing now is more driven than ever and with the Reno scum it just adds more into it hopefully this one comes back in time but Willie Mac as an exhibition champion, I'd like that. Can you stop moving the ball? Now on to Major League of Wrestling Fusion. And what point stuck out to me? Because it was their Super Series. Triple A versus MLW. Again with the ball. Now let's look at the points for MLW, Major League of Wrestling and Triple A's Super Series. What were the points? Oh, I only have two points. Well, technically three. First point being, thank you that they have pre-tapes all the way back to the Super Series. It is fantastic because after watching a couple of PC events where you see on the side that there's no audience, it's a nice change up to have an audience backing them and yelling some random stuff, even though it's air horns in the Mexican audience. It's nice. What was the first point that stuck out to me though? The whole man Warner when he teamed up with Xavio Vega to take on Pergano and Mortis. The only issue was it was Throughout the match, it seemed like nothing could go wrong, but then somehow, whenever Mates, Warner, and Pogano... Okay, relax. I won't talk that much crap, mate. When Mates, Warner, and Pogano walked in into the ring and they always had that standoff, it always seemed like there was something that just went a little bit wrong, but it was good to watch either way. And the second and final point for MLW and AAA's Super Series, I've got to say the Alexander Hammerstone and the Lorado Kid match for the National Openweight Championship was an actual fantastic main event. And seeing Alexander Hammerstone always tear down the house, but Lorado Kid with him, it... Honestly, I'm just going to be flat out honest, when I looked at this to paper, I'm like, you know what, maybe I'll skip on the main event. But, watching that... Ooh, you proved me wrong. I know, it's animalistic for me to say, but that was MLW.
And that was our weekly perspective episode 10 all done with as much wrestling as we can at that time but for difficult times we're gonna make sure to stay safe so make sure to wash those hands and stay inside but also I gotta say thank you to all the subscribers in the OWP galaxy we're on the rocket ship and we're going straight up and so are you I know that sounds wrong at some points but if you want to see more of us trust me all you need to do first step give this a big like yeah, you like that step? Guess what step two is? You yeah, hit that red button. Oh no, you're like, that's a crazy step. It is a crazy step. But if you want to make the third step, it's completely up to you. You can spank that notification bell. And you know what that does? That lets me know that you know that we're all up to date when we post a video and some chats. Again, thank you. And those are the three steps. And guess how much those three steps are? It's for free. So, <laughs> alright, um, how do, we'll clap it out.